Let us pray for the spirit of wisdom to rest upon us, a spirit of understanding and knowledge. Grant us to live in harmony and God's mercy to prevail. Let us pray for the God of hope, joy, and peace to fill all hearts. God, prepare the way. Amen. And now as we enter into our time of prayer, I want to encourage you all to take a look at the prayer list here in the bulletin. You'll see a list of lots of different requests that have come in. And this morning I want to especially ask you to pray for those that have been devastated by Hurricane Michael. Uh, all of those that are hurting, that are suffering, and we trust that God is going to extend his help. And so in our time of prayer, as we quiet our hearts, let's be sure to uh, lift all of these different requests up to the Lord. Let us go to the Lord now in prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for giving us this time together to seek you, to pray, to express our love for you. This morning we want you to know, Lord, that we love you supremely, that we lift you up and put you, place you above everything else in our lives. You are first in our hearts and our lives. Help us, God, to love you with all, all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength today. Lord, we confess that we have all sinned, we have all fallen short of your glory. And this morning as we come to you, help us to remember that you are the one who rescues and redeems. You are the one that forgives us of our sins. And we ask you, Lord, to send your forgiveness to us. Help us to receive your forgiveness in our lives today. We want to give you our thanks this morning for all of the ways that you have been at work in our lives, all of the ways that you've been ministering and demonstrating your goodness. This morning, we especially want to thank you for all of the ministries of our church and all of the different ways that you're displaying your great love and your power in our community and world. And Lord, this morning, we especially want to lift up all of those that have been devastated by Hurricane Michael. The, the utter sadness of losing family members, sadness of losing everything, and so many that have been impacted by the hurricane are feeling crushed this morning and need your help, O oh Lord. We ask you, God, to be with those families that are suffering today. We pray, God, that you would surround them with your love. We ask you, Lord, to be with the first responders, the, the police officers and firefighters and all of those that are serving behind the scenes. We just pray that you would give them strength today as they seek to help those in need. For those that are working in the local hospitals, we pray that you would provide your, your support your encouragement and strength again. And Lord, we ask you to, to uh, minister mightily to all of those who have been impacted by this terrible hurricane. We pray, God, that you would be there in the midst of the recovery efforts, the rebuilding efforts. We pray that you would help the local churches to provide assistance. And we, we pray, God, that you would provide resources, food and water and clothing and all sorts of resources to help those in need. And this morning, as we think about all of those that have been listed on our prayer list, Lord, we know that there are some that are in desperate places, going through physical difficulties, upcoming surgeries, rehabilitation programs. We ask you, Lord, to extend your help your strength to those in need. We pray for those families, the Frock family and Thresher family and other families that have recently lost loved ones, had loved ones uh, go to be with you and that are going, going through a time of sorrow and sadness today. We pray that you would extend your comfort and your help to them. 
We thank you, Lord, for knowing our needs. Even before we can speak the words, you know what our needs are. You're aware of what's happening in our lives. And so I ask you, Lord, to extend your touch to each and every person that's here in this place this morning. May each one of us draw close to you in this time. Help us, God, to be empowered to serve you in this time. Help us, God, to be encouraged in our faith in this time. Help us, Lord, to draw close to you and draw close to one another as we seek to be one for you. We thank you, Lord, for the great mission that you have given us of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we ask you, Lord, to empower all that we do and help all that we do, help it all to be in alignment with the mission that you have given us. And Lord, just as you were with your early followers, you are with us today, your 2018 followers. You're with us and you guide us and direct us in all that we do. And we thank you, Lord, for how you were able to guide and direct the early believers in the area of prayer. And we thank you for guiding and directing us in our prayers today as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to encourage you all to turn one page in the bulletin, and uh, you'll notice uh, that we are continuing our harvest series. Today is the second week of our harvest series, and uh, our theme is earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can, and dedicate all to the glory of God. And you'll notice uh, in the bulletin we have the uh, scripture verse that we're going to be looking at today. We also have a couple life application questions, and we have a prayer. And I want to encourage you to think of someone that might not be able to make it on a Sunday morning. Think of a neighbor or a friend or a coworker that's not able to be here. And I want to encourage you to reach out and share the message with, with someone that you might be connected with. And I believe the message is also being recorded, so you can even share the message through, uh, through the YouTube account that we have. And I trust that God will speak and he'll minister mightily to, to all who are able to hear the message, hear God's holy word. And so now I invite you to open your hearts and receive the message, receive God's holy word into your life as we take a look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Amen. Let us praise God today for his holy word. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for being with us in this time. We thank you, Lord, that as we open your word, you are able to speak to us. We thank you, God, that your word is eternal. Your word never fades away. And we ask you, Lord, to speak to us in this time. Help us know what it means to earn all we can for you. Help us, Lord, to be diligent in everything that we put our hands to. We ask you, Lord, to be exalted in our lives. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in our service to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you can remember your very first job? I know it's been a little while, but I want you to, to think about your very first job. And today is going to be kind of like an interactive sermon. So I'm going to share with you some of the jobs that I've had. I, have, I don't think I've had all of the jobs that I'm going to share with you this morning, but I've had a lot of these jobs. And when I share the job, I want you to either raise a hand, or if you really are feeling exuberant, you can stand up if you've had that job before. And I was able to pull some of our trustees and some of our church leaders, and I believe that some of these jobs that I'm going to share with you are some of their first jobs that they had. First job uh, one of our trustees had was delivering newspapers. Have you ever had that as a job? Okay, you've got to be pretty dedicated to deliver newspapers, don't you? You've got to get up early, get all those newspapers ready. And you've got to get out there on your route, usually before it even 
is light outside, right? That's a tough job. How about babysitting? Have you ever been a babysitter before? Okay, have you ever had to change diapers before? <laughs> so it's not always the, the most enjoyable job, is it, being a babysitter, but it's an important job. And then how about washing dishes? That's, uh, that was one of my very first jobs as a kid. I remember I made $3.75 an hour and I used to wash dishes and dishes and dishes at the Muirfield Village Golf Club in Dublin, Ohio. And I wasn't really worried about the $3.75 an hour. I was excited about unlimited food. And when, they, when I was hired as probably a 13-year-old kid, I was so excited when they said, you can have as much food as you would like. And I was thinking, I would probably do this for free if, if, it's, if it's all food, right? But I remember uh, washing those dishes and how hot and sweaty I would get behind the dishwasher. And it's unbelievable. The dishes just keep coming. They just keep coming in there and they are piling up and you've got to really get after it to get all those dishes done. How about the next one, mowing lawns? Have you ever done yard work as, a, as an early job? Now, I don't know about you, but after doing an hour or two of yard work, I, I often wonder, how can someone do this for 10 or 12 hours a day, five or six, hour, five or six days a week? This is a very difficult job, clearing lawns and weed whacking and doing all of that. That's a tough job. Okay, how about the next one? Waiting tables. Have you ever worked at a restaurant? Okay, and have you ever worked at a restaurant and things got so busy you thought you were gonna lose your mind because the orders were coming in and you gotta get the orders out and you're running around? It's a tough job, isn't it, waiting tables? And then the next one. As a kid, I used to be, I served as a caddy, but I didn't just carry one bag, I actually carried two. And I think I was only maybe 120 pounds and I remember carrying those golf bags and that was tough, that was hard work, but they had the halfway house where lunch was on the way. So if you can get through the first nine holes, <laughs> lunch is there and you're ready to go. And then you can get through the last nine holes carrying those bags, but that's actually, that's a tough job. The next one, how about delivering pizza? Have you ever done that before? We were joking uh, last week, we said, uh, Pastor Wayne, he's got a Harley and he could deliver a lot more than three pizzas on the back of his Harley. I think he could probably deliver 20 or 30 pizzas if he wanted to. But you know, delivering food, that's, that's one that's an important job and it's an important that, that it's done in a timely fashion. And, and uh, if you've ever delivered, some, been a delivery person before, you know you've gotta really keep a tight schedule and you've gotta really be on the ball to do that. The next one, serving as a lifeguard. Have you ever done that before? Okay, and that, this is a very important job. You can't have any kids go under the water and stay under the water. You gotta scoop them out of there. And I remember when I was serving as a lifeguard, you had to be, you had to have a real clear focus on being a lifeguard. You had to watch that kiddie pool. You had to scan the pool and make sure everyone's above the water. And the moment you have to jump in the pool to rescue someone, it's like your heart rate goes from 60 or 70 all the way up over 200 beats a, beats a minute and it's just it's incredible how much energy it takes and how much focus it takes how about the next one working on a farm have you ever done that before now this is this is a side one because i want to find out how many of you have done this how many of you have ever milked cows before have you ever done that before you've milked the cows and i remember baling hay and i think i only lasted a few days baling hay have you ever done that before baling the hay that's a tough job working on the farm and i always like hearing people share their stories about how how it was down on the farm and how you had to work so hard when you're living on a farm you've got to get up early you've got to have a, a, you've got to really get after it okay the next one how about washing cars have you ever done that I, I kind of cheated because I worked at an automatic car wash. <laughs> so I kind of, I think it, I, it almost feels like you're cheating when you work at the automatic car wash because all you do is collect the money and then they drive through and you just think, boy, I'm glad I didn't have to do that by hand. <laughs> all right. And then the next one, Woolworth or retail sales. You ever remember all those places growing up? Maybe you worked at a, uh, at one of the little hardware stores or 
my father-in-law would tell me about what, what it was like in Logan, West Virginia, where, where, where he worked early on, and, and we hear about all kinds of interesting stories. And then the last one, which was probably my very least favorite job that I ever had, frying chicken, working at a fast food restaurant. Have you ever done that before? And you know, when you go from the walk-in freezer to get all of the chicken, and then you go behind the deep fryer and you do that back and forth throughout the day, it kind of throws your system off when you go from freezing to sweating, freezing, sweating, freezing, sweating. And if you think about it, we all have had that first job. And each one of us, can, it probably brings back lots of memories. I want you to just take a moment and share with the person sitting next to you about what that first job was. Just go ahead and share. sure does bring back a lot of memories and after the service you'll have a little more time to share some of your stories about that first job. As we take a look at this scripture verse, only a few words in Proverbs 10.4. It's not a real long verse. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. As we take a look at this scripture verse, we see that if we are lazy over time, over a period of time, we will also be poor over a period of time. When we look at this, as we try to understand what this verse means, when we look at the meaning of the word lazy, what it means is to be, to be pretending to work. Have you ever done that before? You're, your mom's watching and you're supposed to be sweeping and all you're doing is kind of moving the dirt from this pile to that pile and then kind of back and forth. Or have you ever pretended to work where you were told to clean up your room and you just took everything and shoved it underneath the bed or you just crammed it into the closet and you said, I'm done, I finished, my room's all clean. That's pretending to work. A lazy hand is a slack hand. Have you ever gone to shake someone's hand and it was like you were shaking a dead fish? There was just nothing there. It was just kind of a limp. There was just nothing in the grip. Try doing work with a slack hand, with a hand that just can't really hold on to anything. You can't, you can't really get much done with a slack hand, can you? This idea of lazy hands also is the idea of being deceitful in your work. We don't want to be deceitful in our work. Being deceitful mean, means that you really are doing nothing. We say we're working, but we're really doing nothing at all. It's considered folly in the scriptures. It's considered living a lie or false living because when, you, when we're lazy, when we don't really put anything in it, we don't get any really good results. When you put nothing into something, you get nothing back. When you don't put your heart into something, when, you, when we're lazy, the end, the end result is really bad. Lazy hands, what that means is a total failure of purpose when we do things in a lazy manner. We're not really living up to the special purpose that we have in our lives. It's being remiss. Having lazy hands means that we can't help other people. We're focused on ourselves and our own comfort level, so we don't want to be extended too far. We have our lazy hands. We're not going to extend a hand to help someone else because our hands are just too lazy. We can be lazy by not using our abilities. Have you ever seen that happen? Maybe it's happened in your life, or maybe you know someone that has tremendous abilities, but they just don't really want to use those abilities, and those abilities just kind of decay. They don't really grow and prosper. That's lazy hands. Lazy hands are all about making a show, tricking people by faking it. Uh, it's considered fraudulent, 
practice, a fraudulent practice to have lazy hands. It's taking a shortcut. Have you ever wanted to do that with a job? You thought, okay, here's the job, and this is what's required of the job. There's 10 steps. I'm just going to try to get to the 10th step as fast as possible. How would you feel like, how would you feel if someone was working on your car and they decided to skip a bunch of steps? That wouldn't be good, would that? I mean, that would not be a good result, would it? No, we don't like it when, we, when people take shortcuts in their work. And sometimes when we take shortcuts, there's a sadness because we realize I didn't really put my best effort in this. It's kind of disappointing when we have lazy hands. And the end result of the lazy hands is it actually ruins, ruins our lives. We, we become poor. But the joy and the blessing of God's word is God gives us the answer. It says, but diligent hands bring wealth. Some versions say diligent hands bring riches. And what it's, what's interesting is just as it is lazy hands bring poverty over time, diligent hands bring wealth over time. So you work hard. You put your heart into it, and you consistently work hard. You consistently invest your time and resources into what you're doing, and you will be consistently wealthy or blessed. You will prosper. Diligent hands are linked with honest labor. We all want to have honest labor, don't we? We want to deal honestly with others. And it also is linked to God's blessing. God blesses diligent hands. When we do things in a diligent fashion, that brings God's blessing to our lives. God loves it when we are diligent, when we are industrious in what he has called us to do. Also, when we have diligent hands, it reminds us that we have great focus on what we are trying to accomplish. Our mind is focused on the business that is at hand. Isn't it nice to be on the receiving end of someone that is diligent in their work? Don't you like that when you receive the benefit of someone that's been very diligent to do all of the work behind the scenes to make sure that everything is done in a proper way? How many of you have gone to a restaurant and you've been really thankful to have a server that's diligent and is able to bring the drinks out and keep the drinks filled up. Have you ever been to a restaurant though when they weren't diligent and you put your order in and you think it's it's gonna be the New Year celebration. Next thing I know, (laughs) it's gonna take until the new year. It's what's going on And, and you just are sitting there wondering what's going on. But when you have diligent hands, when someone's serving in a diligent way, What a blessing that is. Diligent hands are described as strong hands. And when you go to work, you've got to have a grip, right? You've got to have strong hands. I was thinking about my grandfather who uh, went through the Great Depression. When he was a kid, when he was very young, he had a job that was a very, very difficult job. My, My grandfather had an incredible grip. Every time he went to shake my hand, he would shake my hand. I thought he was going to pick me up off the ground because he had such a strong grip. And as I talked to Grandpa Culbertson, and I asked him about his time as a kid, he told me that his first job was delivering giant blocks of ice. And he would actually have to take the blocks of ice and deliver them. And he had these, he had a big tool that he would use to lift the ice up, and he would take the ice and deliver it to different people's homes. And he told me that it was a very, very difficult job. And I don't think you could do that job with, a lazy, with lazy hands, could you? You couldn't really do that with a loose grip, with like a fish, a dead fish type of grip. You couldn't do that, right? You, you would have to have strong hands. Well, I could tell my grandfather had strong hands because, man, his, uh, he, his grip was something else. Strong hands, diligent hands, it brings God's divine blessing. God God provides his blessing, his divine blessing when we are diligent. One of the pictures linked to this proverb is a picture of digging for gold. Requires strong hands. And if you're going to be treasure hunting and digging for gold, you've got to have great persistence. You can't just say, okay, I just dug a one inch hole. Nothing's there. We're done. (laughs) When they go to dig for gold, what do they do? They dig 
and they dig and they dig and they usually dig so long that the equipment starts to break down and they have to repair the equipment and they keep digging and digging and digging and they said it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. We're going to keep working and working and working and eventually we will find the gold. But it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of energy. If we were to have that kind of a spiritual focus with the diligence in our lives, when we worship the Lord, we would worship with everything that we have. We would worship him with all. If we were to serve with that kind of diligent hands, with those kind of diligent hands, imagine the result if we put everything into it, if we are persistent in our service. What if we give in a diligent way? What if we enjoy all of God's great blessings? What if we are diligent in all of the ways that we pursue God? Imagine what God is able to do. I remember years ago, uh, when I was uh, serving in Western New York, I've served in, uh, in uh, a handful of different churches. I served in a wonderful church in Western New York. And it happened to be the time when my son was uh, seven years old when I was serving the church there in Western New York. And my son, he was watching and noticing what was happening in the church. And he noticed that there was a team of people called First Impressions. They were the greeters and the ushers. And he was kind of watching what they were doing. And he went to the, to the head usher and he said, how can I be a part of First Impressions? And he was, the, the leader of First Impressions was so excited to have a young person asking about serving that he got, him a, he got my son a name badge that said the name of the church and my son's name. And he put my son to work opening up the door, welcoming people into the church, and then also up, opening up car doors as people that were struggling were able to come and be in the church. And I remember after my son uh, was able to serve and be a part of the First Impressions team, I remember as he was serving and as he was doing that, he was so serious about it. He would get up early, he would have his little suit ready to go, and he had a little tie. He's not like that anymore. He doesn't get up super early and wear a suit and tie, but he would get up early and have a suit and tie, and he would have a big smile on his face, and he would say, welcome to fellowship, and he would welcome people into the church, and one by one, People would come up to me and say, oh, it's so great to see a seven-year-old serving as an usher, as a greeter. It's so great to see a young person loving God and serving the Lord. And I was so proud of him that it was actually not something that I was pushing him to do because parents, we know sometimes when we push kids to do something, it's not always the best result, but it's something that he wanted to do. And one by one, people said, oh, it's so wonderful to see, to see a young person serving. I did have one person who happened to be on staff at that church tell me, oh, this is just terrible. How can a seven-year-old be a greeter? How can this possibly happen? There's something wrong with our church. People are going to think that we have a problem because a seven-year-old is serving. And all of the staff members at the church said, no, I'm sorry. It's actually quite inspiring to see a young person serving. Sometimes in life we say, I'm too young to serve. I haven't reached the age of serving yet. But you know what? We're never too young to serve. Sometimes we even say, I'm too old to serve. How can I possibly serve? I was reminded this morning that we have at least three ushers serving that are age 90 and above. And so just as you can never be too young to serve, you can never be too old to serve. And God honors diligent hands. It doesn't matter if your hands are like little baby hands, if they're diligent. God's going to honor that. If your hands are like mine as a 50-year-old, getting older, that's okay, middle-aged. And then as we, we get to 90, 95, even 100 years of age, and we notice there's a few more wrinkles here and there. That's okay. Our hands can still be diligent and we can still serve God. And God can be honored in all that we do. Today is a huge Sunday in the life of our church because this is our leadership fair Sunday. 
And as we've been talking about that first job and talking about having diligent hands for the glory of God, we have some amazing opportunities. We have a few tables set up in our fellowship hall, and we have a listing of the different ministry areas where we're seeking people to come forward and consider serving. We're looking for people to help out at Blessings and Bargains, our resale store, and Kay Billington is here. She's the manager of Blessings and Bargains, and if you would like to volunteer at Blessings and Bargains, she would love to have you assist. Our office manager, Brenda Wood, is our children's ministry director, and she's looking for people to help out in children's ministry. Many of you have helped out with Vacation Bible School. Some of you have a financial background, and you would love to help out on and be a part of the finance team at the church. And if you have an interest in doing that, you can sign up for that. Some of you are interested in delivering items like flowers to those that are not able to make it on a Sunday morning. We have some people that are in assisted living homes and there's an opportunity to be on the flower delivery team. You don't have to do it that often, but if you'd like to be a part of that, you can sign up. We have opportunities for missions, to support missions and promote missions and all the different things that we're doing to show God's love around the world. There's an opportunity to sign up there. We even have opportunities in the office. If you'd like to help fold bulletins and help out in the office, there's an opportunity for you there. We're blessed with a wonderful preschool of 70 kids, and there's always an opportunity to help out at the preschool, whether it's reading to the kids or helping out with our director, Anastasia, behind the scenes. Uh, we'd love for you to consider that. We need people to sign up to help out with our sound and screen ministry. We have wonderful technology here at First United Methodist Church, but it actually takes lots of volunteers to put all of this together and to be able to, to help out behind the scenes. So maybe you would consider doing that. Maybe you have a background in human resources and you would love to be a, you would love to be a part of our staff parish team, which is really primarily human resources. You can check that out. Maybe you have an interest in maintenance and fixing things and helping behind the scenes. You can talk to our trustees and I'm sure that they have, would have opportunities for you to step forward and help out in that area. Maybe you've considered becoming an usher. And just like my son at age seven was able to greet and welcome people to church, we need people to step forward to come and help out and serve as ushers. Would you consider ushing? Is that something you would consider doing? How about visitation? Going to visit people that are in their homes that are not able to be here on a Sunday morning. Maybe there's someone that's in the hospital that needs a special boost of encouragement and you can be a part of the visitation team. Also, youth ministry and young adult ministry. Maybe you have a heart for the youth and the young adults. You can sign up and be a part of that and assist Pastor Parker and Pastor Wayne and others that are helping there. And we're blessed with an incredible music worship ministry here. We have our choir and we have our handbells, but we're always looking for more people to help out with our fine art series and all the special things that we do. You can see Tom Bates if you have an interest in that. I believe that God is calling each one of us to have diligent, strong hands of service. I believe that God wants us to take a step of faith and just as many of the projects in our lives, the remodeling projects, the homework, all of the things that we do, many of these things take time and it takes a lot of energy. Serving in the church also takes time and energy. It requires diligent hands. But I believe that as we will surrender our hands and lives to God, God will stir us up and use us to help further his glorious kingdom. So often in the church, 20% of the people do 80% of the work of the ministry behind the scenes. And so many times in life, people like to watch and kind of take it all in. I wanna encourage you to take a step of faith today and consider finding that one special niche, that one special area of ministry where you could be involved and you can help out. You're not too young to serve. And you're definitely not too old to serve. God can use your life today in a very special way. I believe that God is going to bless your life as you serve him, as you diligently honor him 
And just as you were faithful in your first job and you've been faithful in all the different jobs from your first job until now, you can be faithful in your service here and our wonderful church. Let's stand now and pray. Oh Lord, we want to thank you for reminding us today that if we are diligent, you are truly honored. Help us, Lord, to all be diligent, to fully surrender to you, to put our hearts into what we're doing. Help us, Lord, to find your purpose in our lives. And just as my son had great joy being a greeter, opening up doors, being there as a little seven-year-old, welcoming people to church, we can have incredible joy. No matter what our age is, we can have great joy and serving you. You call us, Lord, to be diligent, and when we're diligent, it brings many blessings in our lives. Help us, God, to be diligent today. We ask you, God, to bless our leadership fair, and we pray that you would stir our hearts. Help us, God, to respond to your goodness and your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let's sing hymn number 130, God Will Take Care of You. Thank you. together. 